Page 42, a little summary at the top of the page is important. Beowulf carries Grendel's head to King Hrothgar and then returns gift-laden to the land of the Geats, where he succeeds to the throne. After defeating Grendel's mother, they throw him a huge party. Uh, Hrothgar showers, showers him with gifts of gratitude, which he takes home. He goes back to Geatland and eventually becomes the king. After 50 winters pass, so now we jump ahead 50 years in the story, Beowulf, now an old man, faces his final task. He must fight a dragon who... Angry because a thief has stolen a jeweled cup from the dragon's hoard of gold, is laying waste to the Geat's land. Beowulf and eleven warriors are guided to the dragon's lair by the thief who stole the cup. For Beowulf, the price of this last victory will be great. The final battle. Then he said farewell to his followers, each in his turn for the last time. I'd use no sword, no weapon, if this beast could be killed without it crushed to death like Grendel, gripped in my hands and torn limb from limb. But his breath will be burning hot. Poison will pour from his tongue. <laughs> I feel no shame with shield and sword and armor against this monster. Uh, Beowulf is like, I'm still, I'm still very brave, even 50 years older than I was. Uh, I'm not scared to fight a monster hand to hand, but this, this is a fire-breathing dragon, so I don't feel any shame in, in using weapons to take a, seal, a shield and a sword with me. Line 674. When he comes to me, I mean to stand, not run from his shooting flames. Stand till fate decides which of us wins. My heart is firm, my hands calm. I need no hot words. Wait for me close by, my friends. We shall see soon who will survive this bloody battle. Stand when the fighting is done. No one else could do what I mean to do. No, no man but me could hope to defeat this monster. No one could try. And this dragon's treasure, his hold and everything in that tower will be mine or war will sweep me to his bitter to a bitter death. Then Beowulf rose, still brave, still strong, and with his shield at his side, a mail shirt on his breast, strode calmly, confidently toward the tower under the rocky cliffs. No coward could have walked there. And then he who'd endured dozens of desperate battles, who'd stood boldly while swords and shields clashed, the best of kings, saw huge stone arches and felt the heat of the dragon's breath, flooding down through the hidden entrance, too hot for anyone to stand a streaming current of fire and smoke that blocked all passage. And the geese lord and leader, angry, lowered his sword and roared out a battle cry, a call so loud that clear that it reached through the hoary rock hung in the dragon's ear. The beast rose angry, knowing a man had come, and then nothing but war could have followed. Its breath came first, a steaming cloud pouring from the stone. Then the earth itself shook. Beowulf swung his shield into place, held it in front of him, facing the entrance. The dragon coiled and uncoiled, its heart urging into battle. Beowulf's ancient sword was waiting, unsheathed his sharp and gleaming blade. The beast came closer. Both of them were ready, each set on slaughter. The Geat's great prince stood firm, unmoving, prepared behind his high shield, waiting in his shining armor. The monster came quickly toward him, pouring out fire and smoke, hurrying to its fate. Flames beat at the iron shield, and for a time it held, protected Beowulf as he'd planned. Then it began to melt, and for the first time in his life, the famous prince fought with fate against him, with glory denied him. He knew it, but he raised his sword and struck at the dragon's scaly hide. The ancient blade broke, uh, the ancient blade broke, bit into the monster's skin, drew blood, but cracked and failed him before it went deep enough, helped him less than he needed. The dragon leaped with pain, thrashed and beat at him, spouting murderous flames, spreading them everywhere. And the Geats, ring-giver, did not boast of glorious victories in other wars. His weapon had failed him, deserted him now when he needed it most. That excellent sword, Ejitho's famous son, stared at death, unwilling to leave this world to exchange it for a dwelling in some distant place, a journey into darkness that all men must make, as death ends their few brief hours on earth. So Beowulf goes to the dragon's home in, inside this cave, calls out to him to come. The dragon comes out, breathing fire. He's, he's breathing fire, and, and Beowulf's... Uh, uh, shield is about to melt and he knows he's he's in for it with this this powerful monster that breathes fire so he gets his his sword and he goes and and stabs at the dragon barely even punctures its scaly hide and doesn't really do anything to hurt him kind of and the blade breaks off and all it really does is serve to make the dragon more angry and the fire just increases beowulf knows he's in a, a bad situation now line 742 quickly the dragon came at him and encouraged as beowulf fell back its breath flared, and he suffered, wrapping around its swirling flames, a king before, but now a beaten warrior. 
None of his comrades came to him, helped him, his brave and noble followers. They ran for their lives, fled deep in a wood, and only one of them remained, stood there, miserable, remembering, as a good man must, what kinship should mean. And on part 44, on page 44, part 15, it talks about Wiglaf. Wiglaf is a great name. I'm thinking I, I should uh, have a son and, and name him Wiglaf. I can call him Little Wiggy. I mean, I, I figure if he's my son, he's going to get picked on anyway, so we'll not give him a name like Wiglaf. Anyway, Wiglaf is the only one out of all those warriors that didn't run away into the woods scared of the dragon. And this happens. His name was Wiglaf. He was Wextan's son and a good soldier. His family had been Swedish once. Watching Beowulf, he could see how his king was suffering, burning. Remembering everything his lord and cousin had given him, armor and gold and the great estates Wextan's family enjoyed, Wiglaf's mind was made up. He raised his yellow shield and drew his sword. Wiglaf, his heart heavy, uttered the kind of words his comrades deserved. I remember how we sat in the meat hall drinking and boasting and how brave we'd be when Beowulf needed us, he who gave us these swords and armor. All of us swore to repay him when the time came, kindness for kindness, with our lives if he needed them. He allowed us to join him, chose us from all his great army, thinking our boasting words had some weight, believing our promises, trusting our swords. He took us for soldiers, for men. He meant to kill the monster himself, our mighty king, fight this battle alone and unaided. And in the days when his strength and daring dazzled men's eyes, but those days are over and gone, and now our Lord must lean on younger arms. And we must go to him while angry flames burn at his flesh, help our glorious king by almighty God. I'd rather burn myself than see flames swirling around my Lord, and who are we to carry home our shields before we've slain his enemy? And ours, to run back to our homes with Beowulf so hard pressed here. I swear nothing he ever did deserved an end like this, dying miserably and alone. Butchered by this savage beast, we swore that these swords and armor were each for us all. So, so Beowulf has all these men with him, all but one of them run into the forest, and Wiglaf goes basically to the edge of the forest and just uh, and lectures them, gives them a little uh, a little guilt trip basically about being cowards and running away and abandoning their king. Then at the top page uh, forty five, we get just a little summary of how the battle ended. We don't get the whole uh, every line des describing it. So here's what happens. Together, Beowulf and the young Wiglaf kill the dragon, but the old king is fatally wounded. Beowulf, thinking of his people, asks to see the monster's treasure. Wiglaf enters the dragon's cave and finds a priceless hoard of jewels and gold. Actually, the, the parts that our, that our editors of our book left out was a, uh, was a, a pretty good battle. Uh, Beowulf and Wiglaf go together, and, and one goes high, one goes low. Beowulf is able to uh, uh, get his sword up enough to, to give the dragon a fatal blow, but in the, in the process, one of the dragon's tusks... Uh, scratches Beowulf basically and he gets poison and he knows that he's going to die. He gets a fatal blow. So he has Wiglaf go and get uh, uh, some of the dragon's treasures and whatnot. And actually at the end of the story, and we won't really need to read to the very end, it's uh, not totally necessary. Uh, the story ends with Beowulf uh, having Wiglaf telling him to, to share all of that wealth with his people and let his people know uh, that he loves them and all that. And then they have a, a funeral pyre. They basically uh, burn his body and honor him in a great way. That is the final battle, and that is all the excerpts from Beowulf that you should read and be familiar with for your Anglo-Saxon period Beowulf test. Thank you very much for, for reading and listening and pretending to care. Okay, bye.